Today's lecture is about um, animal performativity in terms of social, um, social behaviors, emotions, and thoughts, and how to, I was talking about the triplets, emotion, behavior, and thought. Now, um, I've drawn uh, three different animals um, quickly to illustrate these ideas of, of animal performativity um, and we can continue to talk about uh, the, these triplets in relation to um, how I was asked what to do when you're caught in emotions, what to do when you're caught in just acting in behavior mode, what to do when you're caught in thought, um, how to integrate, how to integrate and um, and, 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 and become more whole. I chose three different animals to talk about. I chose the bowerbird from Australia, um, considered the artists and architects of the bird world. And I chose to talk about, well, first of all, the bower, sometimes they create these thatched uh, bowers, which is just a mating place um, for the bird. So the male bird does this, right? Apparently this is all based on like his feathers and stuff. Like if he doesn't, if he's not that colorful, then he really like makes up for it with like a really elaborate bower. So some are the architects and they actually build this whole structure with, with branches and leaves and they crush berries and things mixed with the saliva in their beak to paint the walls. I mean, you know, this is like, this is like the cave painting right here in his bower. Um, but what I want to talk about is uh, the amazing ritual mating dance that the bower bird does. Um, he clears a three foot diameter, basically, and a wall of stones three inches high. He clears every blade of grass from this three foot diameter. He arranges piles of light colored, um, uh, objects. So maybe a pile of insect wings, opalescent insect wings, a pile of um, uh, black stones, charred wood, um, maybe a bit of uh, red postage stamp, a uh, milk bottle cap. Um, yeah, also blue. So we'll find other birds' feathers. Yikes! Blue, he'll steal other birds' eggs. Ah. Anyway, he'll have all of these amazing piles, and he becomes like the ringleader here in his elaborate emotional circus. He spreads out his wings, and he makes them look broken. So he's dragging them across the ground. He lets out this warble that's like, like so pathetic. Talk about Indy. He's so pathetic. He's so pathetic. He's so caught in his emotions. The more pathetic he looks, the more broken his wings, the more elaborate his display. These are tiny little stones. Then the, the, the females fight above him and a branch up above. The females fight over the male, who's like trying to look as pathetic as possible. What can we do with emotion? We can perform that emotion with incredible thought and absolute intention, incredible acts, gestures, behaviors, expressions. Next, We'll talk about behavior in the life of a tick. Ah, this tick is really blown up. When it fills with blood, it gets so huge, bigger than its size. Talk about an intention there. Um, so the tick doesn't see. The tick, you know, senses that there's an animal approaching by the smell of the blood. Here's the dog, and the tick's above in the branch, like way. So the tick says, eyes closed, oh my god, I smell it coming near. It doesn't 
It doesn't see the dog. And I don't know, it doesn't really like hear that dog. It's all like in the nose. And smelling that blood and understanding, obviously being totally wrapped up in the intention and the emotion of of that act, the behavior totally integrated into that intention, totally thought out, but a certain suspension of thought, a certain suspension of, of disbelief. Like if I just close my eyes and I just drop, like that's basically what the tick does. The tick just drops from a branch based on that um, emotional behavior and thought process, drops, totally hits, totally hits the, the dog. So what can we do when we're just just in pure behavior and we're not really thinking and we're not really feeling our emotions? I'd say eyes closed as a way of like totally um, thinking differently with those actions, you know, like removing one of our senses so that we can think differently about those behaviors, you know, and create more intention through that act. Um, so then, okay, so we've got the other um, uh, animal that I chose for to talk about this discourse of, of, of thought in relation to emotion and behavior is the snail. And I had to kind of give him a face. I, you know, basically this is during mating and copulation the snail, God bless the snails, gender performativity, and foreplay, yeah, the snail touches tentacles with another snail for three months, three months, just touching, I'm so interested in that, on so many levels, touch is something we don't do anymore, when I was younger, I used to pretend that I was Helen Keller and close my eyes and just touch everything. Just, just like touch and try and get a, a new sensation about the room that I was in or, you know, what, what does someone look like, you know, based on just touching their face. So in terms of, of, um, of thought, so careful, so considered is the snail that during mating, um, the snail will ex exchange genders, queer sexuality exemplarized in the snail. The, the snail will exchange genders in a dance, in an interactive, collaborative dance with the other. Who am I going to be in relation to you? Am I, am I male, am I female, am I playing male to your female? Am I trans? Am I a transgendered snail? Am I a queer snail? What do you want? Do you want a woman now? Do you want a man now? How can we perform our gender? How can we perform our identity? How can we thoughtfully consider someone else's sexuality, sensuality, intention, or behavior? How can we be thoughtful in a courtship? How can we we think with incredible emotion and behavior, like the snail. And the snail carries the entire world, the entire world in the Fibonacci model here of the universe and the cyclical nature that everything is connected on its back. The snail is the world. Much can be learned.